thereof. The world and they that dwell therein. For he had founded it upon the seas, and he established it amongst the floods. Who shall ascend into the hill of the Lord? And who shall stand in his holy place? He that had clean hands and a pure heart, who had not lifted up his soul unto vanity, nor sworn deceitfully. For it is he that shall receive the blessing from the Lord and righteousness from the God of his salvation. This is the generation of them that seek him, that seek thy face, O Jacob. Say that. So lift up your heads, O ye gates, and be ye lift up ye everlasting doors, and the King of glory shall come in. glory, the Lord strong and mighty, the Lord mighty in battle. Lift up your heads, O ye gates, and be ye ever lifted up, ye everlasting doors, and the King of glory shall come in. For who is the King of glory? The Lord of hosts. He is the King of glory. For the Lord is my light and my salvation. Of whom shall I fear? The Lord is the strength of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? When the wicked, even mine enemies, and my foes came upon me to eat up my flesh. They stumbled and fell. Though in hope shall encamp against me, my heart shall not fear. Though war should rise against me, in this will I be confident. For the one thing have I desired of the Lord, and that will I seek after. That's that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life. And I shall inquire in his temple. For in the time of trouble, he shall hide me in his pavilion. In the secret tabernacle shall he hide me and shall set me up on a rock. And now shall, shall my head be lifted up above my enemies round about. And therefore will I offer in his tabernacle sacrifices of joy. Amen. The Lord bless you and may the Lord keep you. We're here to celebrate the life of this, our brother, Brother Rodney Seymour. Amen? Amen. Amen. I know, I know it is customary that we cry at funeral service. It's customary that we sob. But we want to lift this family up today. Amen. This wife, this mother, the children, the sisters, brothers, and of the entire family. We want to lift them up. Amen. The family has provided a printed program. I know that some of you did not get one. Please look upon with someone. And we will proceed with the program as the family has printed it. We're going to have a song by Obrika Jackson, Costa Leha. And then we'll have our Old and New Testament scripture. Our Old Testament by Reverend Vince Umber. Our New Testament by Reverend Roberson. And then I'll come back and give us our prayer.
May the Lord have blessed to the reason he is the doers of his word. Amen. The New Testament consideration, amen, is going to come from 1 Corinthians 15, verses 51 through 58. Behold, I show you a mystery. We shall not all sleep, but we shall all be changed. In a moment in the twinkling of an eye, at the last trump, for the trumpet shall sound, and the dead shall be raised incorruptible, and we shall be changed. Yeah, yeah. For this corruptible must put on incorruption, and this mortal must put on immortality. Yeah, yeah. And when this corruptible shall have put on incorruption, and this mortal shall have put on immortality, then shall be brought to pass the saying that is written, Death is swallowed up in victory. O oh, death, where is thy sting? O oh, grave, where is thy victory? For the sting of death is sin, and the strength of sin is the law. Thank you, Jesus. But thanks be unto God, yeah. which giveth us the victory through our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Oh, Lord. Therefore, my beloved brethren, be ye steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord. For as much as ye know that your labor is not in vain in the Lord. The Lord bless you. Amen. Minister Kondo and Pastor Robeson, let us go to the Lord in prayer. Father God, we come now. Bowed heads and humble hearts, saying thank you for thank you. your omnipotent grace and mercy. Thank you, dear Master, even in times like these. You've been so good to us. Most of all, you looked beyond our faults and saw our many needs. And for that, dear Master, we want to say thank you. Thank you for sending your son, Jesus, to die on an old rugged cross, buried and three days later rose with all power in his hand, that we may have a right to the tree of life. And for that, dear Master, we want to say thank you. We ask the Lord that you would comfort now, that you would encourage now, that you would lift up now this wife, this mother, these children, the sisters and brothers, and the entire family, the master. Give them strength, the Lord, to carry on in your will and in your way. Keep them forever in your care, the Lord. For they need you, and we all need you, and just can't make it without you. Right, right. You've been good to us, dear Master. Better to us than we could have been to ourselves. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You dipped our black bodies and washed us white as snow and, and we bled our pure and living blood. And for that, dear Lord, we want to say thank you. you. Touched us this morning and woke us up early with the finger of your love, dear Lord. And for that, we want to say thank you. Gave us the activities of our limbs, the Lord. Fed us when we was hungry. Clothed us when we were naked. Put shelter over our heads. Protected us as we went up and down the dangerous highways. And we want to say thank you for that, dear Master. Continue to ride on in our lives like no one else can. And then, dear Master, we come praying for this best friend. This speaking of a church, dear Lord, that's going to bring us to eulogy today. Hide him deep down in the treasures of your love. Yes, yes, yes. Give him strength, dear master, to speak your word. Yes, yes. And we pray, dear master, when our race shall be done on this yes, side. Yes, when we all must stick our swords in the sandy banks of time to study war no more. Put up our hymn books and Bibles. We pray, dear master, to see Rodney and all of our loved ones who are on the other side with you. But most of all, we want to behold your face. In the precious name of Jesus, we thank you. Thank you. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord, everybody. Amen. Come on, praise the Lord, everybody. Amen. Truly, we serve a God who is worthy to be praised. I want to say first, giving our praise to God, who's to head my life to the pastors and ministers here to this family. I want to let you know that I love you. But I'm going to sing this song for you. I've never sung it before, but look at your name and say, I never would have made it. Yeah, yeah. Amen.
said I would have lost it all. But now I see how you were there for me. And I can't say I never would have made it. I never would have made it without you. I would have lost it all. And now I see how you were there for me And I can't say I'm stronger, I'm wiser, I'm better, much better When I look back over all you brought me through I can see with you who I have to hold on to said you wouldn't go make it. Amen. Never would have been. We are up to our resolutions. We have a resolution from the class of 1994. And they have a two part, so we're going to ask them to come. And is there a resolution from the church? New England? Are there any other resolutions? Good morning. Good morning. I want to to Mary Jackson, Robert Wood Robson, Mr. Dolan. Revolution, July 4th, 2020. Revolution from class of 1994. I bid, I bid no one last and farewell. You said goodbye to no one. Your loving heart has ceased at me. Your work on this earth is done. Revolution and the love of member of Rodney Steel. We're all in a place in this world for a limited time. And with the breath of an entrance begins to race to the grave. A race everyone must run. 
There is now a hush of our heart as we come together to pay a respect in our memory of the loved one, classmate who life ended when he was called home to be the eternal present of the Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. According to God's tender mercies in infants, wisdom has fit to move from our midst of the beloved brother in Christ by means of the death on June 21st, 2020. Well, we believe in the word of Jesus in John 14. They encourage us, let not heart be troubled. Yet believe in God, believe in also in me. In my father's house is many mansions. If it was not so, I would have told you so. A go prepare a place for you. And if I go prepare a place for you, I will come again to receive you until myself. There where I am, there ye may be also. We know a gentle grave rotten is in an old man of master. That we, the class of 1984, embrace the Seymour family because of all of us have come on that we continue connected for the rest of our life. We could, cannot replace our beloved one brother, but we are tend to demonstrate the example of love that we share and come among to the family. Our Lord Jesus Christ, as scripture said, we pass from the death of the life because we have loved ones from another. This type of revolution will be given one to the family, and we also will keep one for class of 1980. To the family. We know your loss is deep and your sorrow is great. But we want y'all to know we share your sorrow. But most important, we recognize that his loss is in the heaven of this heaven. I'm going to share with you this morning a poem called Gone Fishing by Delmar Pepper. And it reads, I finished life chores assigned to me, so put me on a boat headed out to sea. Please send along my fishing poles, for I've been invited to a fishing hole, where every day is a day to fish, to fill your heart with every wish. Don't worry or feel sad for me. I'm fishing with the master of the sea. Yeah. We'll miss each other for a while, but you will come and bring your smile. That, that won't be long till you will see till we're together, just you and me. Come on now. To all of those that think of me, be happy as I go out to sea. If others wonder why I'm missing, just let them know. Rodney's gone fishing. Uh, yeah. Homily submitted the fourth day of July 2020, the class of 1994. We love y'all. Yeah. Uh, I just want to say to Rama Seymour and Rodney, everybody already knows that Rodney is the old saying that blood makes you think of water. You know, well, whatever that is, I, I'm not trying to get that, but Rodney was more than an uncle you know, to me. Uh, anytime I went to any sporting event, showing house, I don't care where it was, Rodney was right there. Uh, I'm not trying to be too sad about it, but it's just, man, that is just, he was just a great person to me. Uh, a lot of stuff that he said to me will stick for me forever. It's not appropriate for right now, but uh, I just want to tell you, I, um, I love you, Rodney. Uh, keep on um, to the family this morning, I just want to say that I love you, and I shared a lot of moments with Rodney come growing, up, growing up in Hearn. We went to school together, and Miss Barbara, she was our homeroom mom, so I'm great. And, um, you know, when you go to school, the first... You, I mean, you go to the school to see who homeroom you're going to be in. One person homeroom you wanted to be in was Rodney's because, you know, Miss Barbara was going to bring some stuff when we had field day or whatever it was. She was going to bring you something to eat. And it was just exciting to look at that list and see, hey, I'm in Rodney's homeroom class, so we're going to have something good on this day and that day. But when they got the store and... The, the the what they taught their kids, Rodney, Freddie, and Carla, was you know 
you some black people that have got something nice and you're not above no one else. And they, Mr. and Mrs. Seymour had an account for just about the whole community. And some of us paid with cash, some of us paid with food stamps for Rodney, Carla, and Freddie. They didn't come to school and say, oh, your mama paid my mom and them with food stamps. They just treated everybody. They taught them well, and they were some great people. And yeah. I love them, and I'll, yeah. I'm here for you, Miss Barbara, Miss Bonnie. Anything Mike Washington and my family could do, I'm here for y'all. God bless you, and may God keep you. Good morning to the, uh, to the pastor on the, on the roster, everybody that's here. We're here because of love. And I don't say that. You know, a lot of times you go to funerals and people say love, but they don't really understand what love means. Uh, I'm from the class of 96. I know Knight Rodney was a class of 94, but let me tell you about some connections that bring us all here today. People talk about him fishing. He's been fishing all his life. People talk about playing dominoes. We've been playing dominoes all life, even in the cafeteria right there at Hearn High School. Connections, conversations. We are from Hearn, Texas. People talk bad about Hearn, Texas, but there are successful stories from right here in yeah. Hearn, Texas. And I, I've had those conversations with Rodney Seymour. Why? A black businessman. Success. Graduate of high school. Success. Was able to uplift his community by talking to anybody and everyone. Success. This is what I'm talking about. Traveling. Well, my family moved, he moved. Whether it's on the high seas or anywhere in the state of Texas or across the country. Success. Living his life. Pulling people with him. Success. If you were in a bad spot, he would talk to you personally. He didn't tell you business. He would talk to you himself. This is what you need to do to get out. This is who you need to talk to to make those moves you need to move. Success. My name is James Curtis Williams. Mary Lee Robinson Williams is my mother. I am here because of love. Love. I say it again. Love. Thank you. Cousin over there, I'm here for y'all. 
Miss Bundy, all the time. I wanted to let y'all know that Long Karate was a good man. Not only a good man, but a good uncle and a good father to his kids. I want to let Rodney know that your daddy gonna be forever with us, always and forever. And I want to let my grandma know you ain't never gonna lose me. I'm gonna be here with you the whole ride. And, and to my mama, I love you, Carla. I love you. And to Terry too. I love all the family. Preachers always have a word from God to share, and we don't want to overlook them, so I'm going to preach uh, preacher pastors if they would come, if they so desire to have a word at this time. Amen. First, give unto God, amen, to this great family, amen, my own family that I'm married into, amen, to Bundy. Amen, my friend at the dollar store, she would bring the baby every day during school to get a blanket because they could never re remember to get the blanket. And mama would always feed me at the store just so that I could get through the day at the dollar store of putting up with some of y'all. Yeah. But I'm reminded of a very fun moment, amen, of me and Rodney when I moved on to the block, he talked noise when I moved to the corner and I remember one day I called myself barbecuing one day. I did not know how to barbecue. I just knew how to light some coals and put some meat on there and whatever happened happened. <laughs> so one day I decided I was going to show I had watched Rodney long enough up the street while we played dominoes and lied to each other and I was cooking one day some chicken. I had the prettiest chicken on this side of heaven. Mm. Pretty. Just pretty chicken. And I 
I had that chicken ready, I said, I'm finna take it off the pit right now. Rodney said, you bet not. I said, what's wrong with you? He said, man, don't you know? You got to pour a bill over that chicken. Boy, then you wrap it back up, then it's gonna be ready. I said, don't you tell nobody that, that, that the pastor had me up here at the house. I said, boy, go on. As I think about losing my friend, my neighbor, the domino games we had, the days he lied when he told my wife that her tea cakes was almost good. They weren't quite there, but he had a handful and a bag on the way out the door telling her, you just keep practicing. You are almost good as Big Mama there, but you just keep practicing. But he kept eating. I thought about it the other day, and I thought about Rodney going home, and I was reminded of a story Amen. As a preacher, pastor, amen, that there was a young little boy that lived way behind the graveyard. And every day when the bus driver would come to get this young lad, he would always ponder in his mind why the young lad would have to travel through the graveyard. And one day after the bus driver picked up this young lad, day after day, he decided to ask him on the way home. He said, son, why is it? that every day that I pick you up, you have to travel through this graveyard. And the young lad told the bus driver, he said, man, if you just look way back there by yon yonder, he said, through the graveyard, there's a house that I call home. Yeah. And the only way for me to get home is through the graveyard. Yeah. Listen, y'all, what shall we say then to these things that have God would be for us? Who can be against us? Right me with home, yes, it hurt. Yeah. Amen. Yes, it hurt because he was a friend to all. I will never forget, amen, the day Rodney went home and I thought about everything that the young man taught me in just a short amount of time of me living on the block. To the family, Bundy, keep your head up, baby, run on. Rodney loved you, you loved Rodney. I experienced it, I saw it. I asked him, did he get his permission slip signed? I asked him all the time, did you get your permission slip sign to come play domino? He said, man, I'm the man of that house. I run the house over there. <laughs> God bless you. Keep your head up. Mama, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Amen. 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 We thank God for his grace and his mercy. All I got to tell you, baby, is keep your hand in God's hands. And he'll see you through. Amen. I, 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 I can't say I know how you feel. Because I've never buried a wife. I've been married a couple times, but I've never buried a wife. And I want to give you my deepest condolences to let, and let you know that if you need anything, we're as close to you as you are to your nearest telephone. That's from the heart, not from the back. But from the heart, we want to let you know that. You have children, and, 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 and our job as men is to take care of the widows. It wasn't your choice to become one. It was God's, and God will see you through. To this humble mother, Miss Seymour is such a loving lady. And the strength that God has given her in times like these. I don't want to applaud you, but I want to commend you. Because I can only assume the hurt that you may feel on the inside. The conversation was talked that she's still grieving from her husband. And now she has to bury a son. We're with you, darling. The whole city of her and community, we want to let you know we love you. And we're going to do all we can to support you in the endeavors that you take upon. Keep being that strong woman, a motherly figure, not only to her own kids, but to every child she comes in contact with. She gives some motherly advice. We commend you for that and we give you Unto God, who is the author and finisher of your faith. Keep holding on, Miss Seymour. God's going to keep seeing you through. Amen. Thank all of you who have shared and come under these conditions 
of this pandemic. Thank you, I want to say on behalf of the family, thank you for all that you have done, what you will do on tomorrow, and what you will do on next month, year, and years to come. They're going to need your prayers. We're going to have a song by Brother Charles Williams, and then after the song by Brother Charles Williams, the next voice you shall hear will be that of Deacon Frederick, William Frederick Golden of the old Ela Missionary Baptist Church. And I ask you to do this with me. Pray for him as he get ready to come. Because everybody know that him and Rodney, amen, were best friends. Charles. Rodney was the best friend of mine as well. Uh, Frederick and Rodney, Cedric, Pat, Tutu, Freddie. Well, Freddie was my age. The other ones wouldn't let us do everything they did. And I'm thankful that they didn't most of the time. Uh, one thing as I got older, we transitioned into becoming men. And the careers of our lives turned into what they turned into. I did music and Rodney was a full-time fan. So much a full-time fan that no matter what, no matter who, if nobody else was gonna show up, Rodney was showing up. Matter of fact, he was probably in behind me and I didn't even notice it. With a bottle of liquor or a beer, yelling, supporting as a fan, or probably on the front of the stage like at Uber's birthday parties. <laughs> the loudest in the room. His light shone bright, no matter what. And when we went places, he was like, I'm down to go. I tell you what, I got to get home. I don't need no problems from Bunny, I got to get home. And today, Bunny, said to say, that he went to his final home and I can't go with him right now. None of us can. He'll be there waiting for us. But he got there when it was time for him to get there. I started I started on this journey It was a
We was born on the same day. We was born on the same hour. But I'm going to tell you one thing. I love my brother. I die for my brother. But yet I tell you it's a difference between a friend and a twin. Mm. I, I can sit down on my porch and I can look around and I don't think about looking for Sid to come by to come by and just chill with Fred. You want to do this, Fred, you want to do that, but yet I can sit on my porch on my patio and I can be looking around the corner and I'm thinking that Rodney is going to come around that corner. i tell you another thing I can ask Sid, my twin. Sid, it's 30 degrees. It's raining and sleet. And I can say, Sid, let's go feed the cows. Said half cows. Fred, it's too cold to go out there to the cow to the country right now. You crazy? I'm not gonna say the words that he say, but I'm gonna say you crazy. You totally out of your mind that I'm not gonna go out to the country in this type of weather. But yet I can dial my friend. He not gonna ask no question. He gonna say, let me see what Bunny gonna do. If she ain't got nothing to do, Fred, I'm ready. I'm gonna get my gun and I'm. Coming on, I'm ready to go. It's a difference between a friend and a twin. That a friend will stick with you. He'll do the crazy things that you want to do, but yet your brother ain't going to do it. Because he know that Fred, you crazy and you out of your mind. But yet, a friend, he going to stick with you to the end. Now, it's, it's only one true friend, and that's the Lord Jesus Christ. He was a friend, and how was Jesus a friend? He was a friend that he gave his life for you and I. Uh, Jesus was the type of person that he went to a wedding. He changed the water into wine. Now everybody here know that it was a party. What Rodney's gonna do? You didn't have to think about no drink. You didn't have to think about no alcohol. Because Rodney already had it. And that's the same thing I can say about my friend. Whatever you needed, he had it for you. Jesus was a, a friend that he healed a blind man. And the disciple asked him why was he did it was his mother's sin or his father's sin why he was in that situation. And Jesus said, no, it's, it's time for me to do my work. Well, when nighttime is coming, no man can work. So while it's day, you got to do your work. Rodney was a type of person that did the work while it was day. Any time that Rodney needed some help, Anytime Fred needed some help, anytime his mother needed some help, Rodney was there to help him. Anytime Freddie needed some help, anytime his kids needed some help, Rodney was there to help him. I can tell you Rodney loved to hunt. He introduced me into fishing. I never went to the river to fish. Everybody know because we was on our bootleg CNN. Rodney was the cameraman. And I was the anchor man. I I didn't know how to river fish. I I was a bass fisherman. I, I was a a, a a fool, you know. But yet I liked it to hunt. But as a friend, you give me your talent, and I give you mine, and we can work everything out. Yeah. And Rodney made me a better fisherman. Everybody think I'm the greatest fisherman it is, but I wasn't no great fisherman. I had a, a good teacher. The same thing about Rodney with hunting. I was a, I think I'm a great hunter. I think I'm a great hunter. I think I'm a great teacher. Rodney was a type person. Fred, I want you to teach me how to hunt. Fred, I want you to teach me how to, to go kill. Yet Rodney he had a problem. He was kind of nervous about the scope. Rodney shot at a deer seven times. He said, Fred, <laughs> There's something wrong with my skull. I say, Rod, right, there's not nothing wrong with that skull. It's just you too anxious by pulling the trigger. 
So what I do, I take the scope, I go, I take the gun, I go out to golf, and I take the gun, and I look at it, and I say, Mr. Ditto, I say, I need to sight this gun in for my friend Riley. I sight the gun in, but first of all, I take the first shot, and I looked at it, and I seen that the gun was off. It was off about four inches. So if you shooting a deer at 100 yards, 100, 200 yards, and it's off four inches, by the time you get to that deer, it's off four feet. So I sighted in the gun, and, and I shot two bullets side by side. And I say, Rodney, I sighted in your gun. Now, if you miss a deer this time, I'm not going to say it's the gun fault. It's because you're over two inches. Well, shoulder to shoulder, I'm going to tell you this story. Rodney was at the hog pen. The deer was about 350, 400 yards away. I was somewhere out somewhere else. Rodney wasn't, I wasn't with Rodney, but Rodney called me. He said, Fred, the big buck didn't come out. He said, Fred, but he way on the other side of the field that I can't barely see him. I said, Rodney, well, all you got to do is just put the scope on him and pull the trigger. He said, Fred, he's getting ready to go in the woods right now. I said, well, Rodney, you need to put the scope on him and pull the trigger. Don't be too anxious. Just take your time and pull the trigger. Rodney hung up the phone. Five minutes later, he said, Fred, I got him. I got him. I got him. And I said, Rodney, well, what you gonna do now? I said, Fred, I mean, say, right, Fred, I don't know what I'm gonna do, but the deal by 400 yards, you gonna have to come down and help me put him back over here to the other side. I said, Rodney, you all on your own. He was so tired when I got there. <laughs> he was so tired, he brought a deal all the way that 400 yards, he drove that deal. But all I'm trying to say right now that Rodney did never give up on anything. Regardless of what he tried to do, regardless of what he put his mind to do, he did it. And I, I like to say that Rodney was a type of man that regardless of his situation, his sickness, or in his health, he did whatever he possibly could for his mother. When he found out his daddy was sick, he said, Fred, I got to do what I'm supposed to do for my mother. His daddy passed. I got to do what I got to do for his mother. Rodney asked me, he said, Fred, can you help me put a roof on my mother's house? I need to get a roof on my mother's house. It wasn't about no money. It wasn't about no, no, I can do this, I can do that. I said, Rodney, we're going to put the roof on your mother's house. We put the roof on his mother's house. It was a relief of Rodney. I didn't ask him for no money. He didn't think about giving no money. We had food, we had drink, I had a hamburger, I had fish plate and a double meat bacon cheeseburger. And I was satisfied. And that's how a friend's supposed to be. You ain't gotta always look for money. You ain't always gotta look for nothing in return because it's a friend. I know a friend that walked on water. Told Peter to come out here with me, but Peter didn't keep his mind focused on Jesus. But I had a friend. I'm going down the river. Rodney let me drive the boat. Rodney said, Fred, when you get to the bank, I want you to mash the gas as hard as you can. And you pull up the prop. If you don't pull up the prop, Fred, we're going to be in a bad situation. I had Rodney's cell phone. I had my cell phone. So when I hit the dirt, Rodney fell over in the water. <laughs> but one thing that was special about that fall, that uh, can't nobody I see it but mine. Rodney had my flashlight, it's LED white. When Rodney hit that water, he was up underneath the water. I laughed. The whole water just turned green. <laughs> and I still don't understand it today why the water turned green. But yet Rodney said, Fred, when he came up, you, 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 you wrong. You're wrong and you know you're wrong. But 
The part of it is a friend. If that was my twin, it would have been a whole bunch of different words said. But Rodney, he said, Fred, you got my cell phone. So I can't throw you in the water. So all I'm just trying to say that Rodney was a friend. Rodney didn't cuss Fred. Rodney didn't talk about Fred. Rodney didn't criticize Fred. Why I'm up here today, about a month or two ago, Rodney said, I was doing a funeral and I had to speak at my classmates funeral. He said, Fred, you know, you just don't be too serious. You're always laughing, you're always playing, but yet when you got behind that pulpit, I don't get to talk on behind a pulpit at church because I'm a deacon. I'm not no reverend. But yet I felt a different kind of way when I got behind that pulpit. He said, Fred, you wasn't talking. You act like you was a preacher. And if you have the opportunity to speak at my funeral, Fred, I want you to speak at my funeral. And I said, Rodney, don't you worry about nothing like that because you probably would be speaking at my funeral. That I wouldn't have to do this, but it looked like the Lord had a different, a different plan for me and him. But I know a friend. I know a friend that loved his mother. I know a friend that he was on the cross and he said, disciple, take heed the mother. He said, Disciple, take ye the mother, and mother, take the disciple. Miss Seymour, if there's anything that Fred can do, I am your son. I am your friend. I am your pal. Anything that you need me to do, I will do it. Rodney was a true friend. I know a friend that he went and died on the cross. I know a friend that right now he's laying down, he's not dead, he's just sleeping. He's just resting in the arms of the Lord. But I know a friend that he died for you and I. He died on that Thursday morning night. He rose up early, that Sunday morning, that he gave us the right to the tree of life. So family, I tell you, if all you gotta do, I know it hurt, I know it's, uh, it's a burden, but all we gotta do is keep our mind, keep our hearts focused on the law. Yeah. If we keep our minds on the law, the law will see us through. Yeah. He gave us the right to the tree of life, and we keep our trust in the law. And follow like Rodney had as being a friend. And the Lord will make us, will see us through. I know there's no other friend like Jesus. So if we keep our trust in him, we can make it. Bundy, Rodney, I know it's going to be hard. But we just got to keep our trust in the Lord. He's not going to put too much on us that we can bow. If we couldn't bear, he wouldn't have let it happen. That the Lord is just too good to make a mistake. Rodney have fought a good fight. He has finished his course. And all we got to do is keep all the good things in our minds. Keep all the good things, what he's done. The things that he taught you and the things that he showed you in the way that you can love. That all I can say, I, and I want to tell you this. As a friend, that is nobody, nobody can take the place of Jesus Christ. And this is my prayer. I hope something that I have said, that somebody have got something out of this word today. But there's no other friend like Jesus. That no one can be there in the night. No one.
and be there to call. And all you got to do is just get on your hands and knees and ask God for the strength. Ask God for the guidance. And ask God just to help you with the burdens that you're bearing right now. Yeah. So it's not, I can't say how that you might feel. I can't see how it might hurt. But I know it feels like a part of my heart is gone. But I, yet I know that he can mend my heart. Little Al Green. Okay. And he can mend my broken heart back together. And I know he can mend yours. Miss Seymour, I never lost a child. Miss Seymour, I never lost a son. But I know I have a savior that he can see you through. Trey Derry, that's my boy Captain. Captain got in trouble way back in ninth grade. He slapped a girl. Don't nobody know why I called him Slapper, Captain. But if you know why I call him Captain, he's a good true friend of mine. Trey Derrick is a good friend of mine. He got his own way. He got a job, he got a family. Reminds me of me. I didn't leave of home when I was 17. I graduated, then I left home. Trey Derry, he left before he graduated. Trey Derry got him a job before he graduated. Trey Derry got him a house before he graduated. Trey Derry is a man. And what he did, he followed in his daddy's footsteps. If you think you're grown, you're out on your own. And what Trey Derrick did, what a grown man want to do. God dog, as I tell you, um, Day Day, I want you to be strong. I don't want to look at you too much because you look too much like Rocky. Being you're growing up to be a man. And I know it's going to be hard, but yet we got to keep the faith. Jakeisha, I can't say more than Rodney love Jakeisha. Rodney want to go fishing. Rodney want to go hunting. Fred, I got to take Jakeisha to work. When I get through taking her to work, then we can go fishing. You know, it's a lot of kids right again. I can't say them all right now because my mind is going left and right and north and south. But I just want y'all to pray for this family. I want y'all to pray for my family. I want you to pray for my friends because we have lost a loved one. So all we can do is just love one another and be more like Rodney. Rodney got a touch on everybody's heart that's in here today. If he didn't touch it, you wouldn't be here. If he didn't touch it, you would be wearing that shirt. And I say to my friend Jim and I, that I'm not gonna cuss you. Regardless of what you try to do, I'm not gonna do it because you're my friend. Rodney and Jim and I, that's what they think. He wanna feel a little part that I can bring back what Rodney did, I can't do. Rodney didn't cuss for it. Regardless of what I did, regardless of what I said, we're going to work it out. Regardless of the situation. But like I said, I'm going to go back to it again. It is a difference between a friend and a twin. Thank you. Put your hands together one more time. Amen, amen. Good words, great words. Amen. At this time, you're in the hands, amen, of the all family. Amen. March of words. Can the impossible. I see the invisible. I feel the intangible. For the sky, the sky. To what I can have. Oh, the sky, the sky is the limit. 
to what I can have. Come on, put your hand together like that. Oh, just believe and receive it. God will perform it today. Hey, hey, just believe and receive it. God will perform it today. I'm looking for a miracle. Do -do -do. And I expect the impossible. I see the invisible. Mm -mm -mm. I feel the intangible. For the sky, the sky is the limit to what I can have. Oh, yes, the sky, the sky is the limit to what I can have. Thank you. 